Today I'll be going over question one from the week nine worksheet. This question asks you to consider the titration of acetic acid with sodium hydroxide. Acetic acid is a weak acid and sodium hydroxide is a strong base. So essentially we're titrating a weak acid with a strong base. The most difficult part about this question I find is that people don't know what maths to use, what equations should we be considering, what chemistry is going on. The math itself shouldn't be too difficult. The most difficult thing you'll have to do is solve a quadratic equation. So I'll focus on the theory. In order to consider the theory, we should first draw a titration curve. On the horizontal axis, we'll consider the volume of base added. And on the vertical axis, we'll look at the pH. If you were to do this titration, you'd end up with a curve that looks something like this. There are a couple points that are important on this curve. The first one is where we start. So here is the initial point where no base has been added. So at the initial point, all you have is a weak, uh, weak acid. Because we started with sodium, or sorry, we started with acetic acid. So all we have in here is acetic acid, which is a weak acid. And essentially all you need to do is solve a weak acid equilibrium, which you can do with an ice table and the Ka. So you set the Ka equal to the equilibrium expression and then you use your ice table to replace the concentrations with uh, X's and you should be able to solve for the concentration of, hydrox or of hydronium ions and figure out the pH from there. The second important point is this one. This is the equivalence point. So what is equivalent to the equivalence point? Well, that's the point at which the moles of acid and the moles of base are equivalent. So if we react a weak acid with a strong base, we're going to get a reaction that goes to completion to create water and a salt. In this case, with acetic acid and sodium hydroxide, the salt that you'll end up with is sodium acetate. So here's the acetate ion. This comes from acetic acid, where it lost its proton. This is where the proton would go. And here's the sodium, which lost its hydroxide. That proton and the hydroxide react to form water, and we get this salt left over. So if you've talked about salts in solution having a pH that is not neutral, then you already know how to solve this problem. You know that sodium the conjugate acid of a strong base is going to be a very, very weak acid. So essentially, it does nothing. Acetate, on the other hand, is the conjugate base of a weak acid, which is a weak base. So this can react with water to produce hydroxide ions and acetic acid. So here, the problem we're solving is a weak base problem. And again, you already know how to solve this. All you have to do is say Kb is equal to your equilibrium expression. And um, you use an ice table to figure out, or to uh, sub in x's for each of those um, concentrations. And then you solve a quadratic equation. You get the concentration of hydroxide ions. From there, you can find um, either the concentration of hydronium ions and from there the pH, or you can solve for the pOH from the concentration of hydroxide ions and then relate that to the pH. Both are essentially the same method, it's just whether or not you take the log first or second. So here we have these two points, which are both simple equilibrium problems. One where you have a weak base, where all the acid's been used up in the equivalence point, and one where you have a weak acid, which is what we started with initially. So what about in between these two points? This is known as the buffer zone. 
and my writing went over a little bit there, but that's between the equivalence point and the initial point is the buffer zone. So what is a buffer? A buffer is a solution that contains uh, a weak acid and its conjugate base, or a weak base and its conjugate acid. A buffer re uh, resists change in pH. So whenever you have a buffer, the easiest way to solve these problems is with the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, which looks something like this. It says that the pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. And these are concentrations. So the only confusing part about this equation might be what base and what acid? Because I have acetic acid and sodium hydroxide, is that what it means? Well, not quite. These are conjugates of each other. So if acetic acid is the acid, then the base has to be the conjugate base of acetic acid, which is the acetate ion we've been talking about. So this would be acetic acid, and this would be acetate. So how do you know what these concentrations are? Well, how much base did you add? If you add uh, half a mole of sodium hydroxide to one mole of acetic acid, then that half a mole is going to react completely to form a half a mole of acetate ions, leaving behind a half a mole of, of uh, acetic acid. So you can solve any uh, anything in the buffer zone using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. The final part of this is beyond the equivalence point. And this part is pretty simple because essentially you just have a strong base. Once the base has neutralized all the acid, there is effectively only strong base in solution. There's also a little bit of acetate ions in solution, but that's going to minimally change the pH compared to the strong, at, uh, the, sorry, the strong base that you're added, adding. So here, you can essentially consider anything, any base added beyond this point to be the only base added and just assume it's a strong base solution. And you can solve that just by knowing that a strong base dissociates completely and then the moles of strong base that you added is equal to the moles of hydroxide ions that you've added um, for something like NaOH at least. And then you should be able to figure out the pH from there. Hopefully, looking at this conceptually, looking at this conceptually clears up some of the what math do I use when.